but what I can say for sure is we've apparently started and there's a possibility that there's no technical problems. However, that possibility is quite small. Welcome to Pair of Geeks 2, where we are playing Signs and Portents. It is session six. We have miraculously, we are using Hangouts, but we're not doing it properly. In fact, I can only appear on camera when I manually put myself on camera. So, um, for the rest of the time, the usual Hangouts thing will work, where whoever's talking appears on screen. Just not for me, because screw you, YouTube. You seriously fucked up the RPG community. We hate you, YouTube. This video is going to be it's a demonetized channel anyway, so we can say what we fucking like. And I'm going to say this, YouTube. I want to take a VD dump on your heads for what you've done to Hangouts. Over to our GM. Yes, after that little rant. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, oh, Science of Portents, uh, episode six, as we, uh, we just heard. Um, our intrepid gang are uh, charging through the mountains at uh, uh, quite a high pace on the, the horses. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them to introduce themselves. I'm going to go from left to right, my left to right. So it's Jason first. Oh. Uh, yes, I'm not on mute. Fantastic. So I am playing Rorik Kraghoff who is a half-dwarf, Steve, he is not a human, um, and uh, he has various awesome uh, qualities like having resistance to poison and dark vision and all that stuff, but more to the point, he is, or possibly was by the sounds of where things are going, uh, a member of the Dominion of Silver, which uh, fights beasties like werewolves and vampires and stuff like that. And uh, since then, he's been under the surface of uh, Cressida, sometimes known as Cassandra, uh, or somebody else. Um, and uh, there's all this intrigue going on between her and the Emperor, and who's really the bad person, and lots of uh, things about destroying uh, these these orbs and so on. Uh, so he's kind of kind of into it all and, and all that. So yeah, now I'm just waffling. So somebody else, please talk. Okay, next on my screen is Jay. Uh, hello. Um, oh, what are we doing? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm veiling. I'm the bloke who shoots arrows and stuff, and uh, and it's a bit sneaky. Um, so yeah, it's me, really. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Ian. Oh, well, I don't think I can compare with those two intros, but I shall have a go. I'll be playing Sir Bayor, the last of his order, out to save the world! <laughs> and uh, Becky, please. I am me. Yes, me. I, 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 I've, I've never really done a name. I mean, what is a name? It's like when you, when you introduce yourself so somebody can refer to you later, but the only reason you'd have for that is if somebody needed to refer to you, and, well, I, I've been alone all my life, so, books are good friends, though. Uh, they have names, interestingly, but they don't speak, so I've never felt the need to name myself. I am a, a tabaxi, is the proper term. And a wizard of sorts, but I, I, I don't think I'm a very good one, to be honest. Um, you know, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a wizard if there was another wizard present. Anyway, uh, that's me. Okay, thank you. Um, we would have uh, generally another character to introduce, but uh, we're one, one man down tonight, so um, we'll go straight into the game. Um, <laughs> I believe last time we finished on some constitution rolls. We did. We did. That um, <clears throat> I think everyone passed apart from Becky. Oh, bugger. 
you've forgotten all about that, haven't you? I did completely, to be honest. You asked for a role at the end of the session, and uh, yes, I do recall now. You, you never told yeah. us what that was for. No, you're going to be able to find out in a minute. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, as you run, um, you pick up the pace and you charge um, headlong through the, uh, the, the pass um, that you uh, just tackle some some trolls in, um, and some stones start raining down around you. Smaller smaller stones at first, but then bigger stones, um, and you have to spend more and more concentration on on finding a path through this these rain of stones as they start to pour down from, from both sides of the pass towards you. Um, and obviously that is uh, uh, taking a little bit more concentration for for Cat. Um, and uh, as the as the rest of the party um, reach the end of the pass, they turn and notice that that Cat and Harai are actually missing from the party. Damn! Rain my house and look back. You're now past where the stones are being thrown at you, so you're now sort of out in the open end of the of the pass. Um, am I able to, like, use my my shield almost like an umbrella? Um, I'll I'll try and encourage uh, Bale to do the same in order to move back. Uh, see if we can find them. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, you can do. Certainly for the smaller stones. If there's anything really big, obviously. Uh, could give you an issue, but yeah, certainly for the smaller stones, you can you can ward them off with that. Okay, let's go. Okay, so you go back through, um, and and as as you left the the, the pass, the um, the uh, stones are starting to started to, uh, to to drop in the number and, and rate of being thrown. But as you back, enter back into the pass, it sort of picks up again, and uh, you can hear the smaller stones rattling off your off your shields and uh, you do get bumped a few times by by a, a, a bigger lump of rock hitting your shield but um you can you can you notice a small small path um off to one side that you uh that you just uh, rode straight past on on the way to the out of, out of the pass um, and that is the only place you can see uh, that where anyone could have gone. Okay. So, what you want yeah, to do? I'll, I'll sort of quickly check the ground, see if there's any sort of tracks or anything. But I've got a feeling, yeah, I'll still sort of head that way. Yes, you can see that the ground has recently been disturbed in that area. Yeah. So. Um, you can ride quickly up there, and you find uh, Cat sitting on a horse uh, on a, a, under a sm small overhang of rock, sheltering from the stones. Uh, do you need a ride, Cat? I have a ride. It's what I could do with this an umbrella or something. I'm afraid I I don't have your strength. I don't know how you're able to cope with this. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, um, we're uh, two very different species. Uh, I could hold my shield above your head. Why, if 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 you would do such a thing for for me, I, I that, that would be remarkable. What I could do is ride either side of her horse, shield as much as possible. Thank yeah, you. as long as there's enough room. Probably either side. So much. Well, I, so. I assumed I'd have to fight my way out at some point and probably die out of inadequacy. <laughs> um, Phelan, where are you two? You, you, did you go back or are you waiting at the end of the pass? And, and Sir Beor, did you leave Galahad? Um, I'm going to stay where I am. There's no point in all going back. I'm going to basically okay. keep an eye on things and make sure we're not. If nothing comes at us. Yeah, I left Gerard, aka Galahad. Gerard, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, you left him with Balin at the end of the pass as you went back for for Cat. So now you have to um, you have to get Cat back out through uh, to, to to reunite the the whole group. 
So you're going to ride our side with your shields raised, sort of like trying to defend. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Have Dave got any money? Because when you return, you'll probably find me trying to play card games with him. He's like, oh. <laughs> I, I don't know what sort of um, sort of money that uh, Steve Royal pays him for his squiring, if at all. Oh, it's just for three. Board and lodgings. <laughs> just board and lodgings, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, if you could... Galen, then, when you get back. Equal pay for right. a day's work. Yeah, yeah. So, you're going to be riding um, one-handed fairly fast or not? Um, well, what, what's your shield? I'm assuming your shield is like steel, isn't it? Um, it's a shield. So, I would imagine it would be like a, a knight, like a inverted pair of rocks. Like that, so yeah. Cover. yeah, there are some Roger Rocks, yes. Yeah, faster. Faster's reasonably practicable for the, uh, yeah. the cat person. Okay, can you all roll me then animal handling? Oh, fantastic. Because really? this, is, this is a bit of a special situation now, you're trying to ride in formation. <clears throat> 21. Right. Good. 13. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 17. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it's good. Okay, so it's not good. <laughs> the um the the three of you ride off and um you are quite successfully covering cat with your shield, but your pace is a little bit too fast for her and uh it's it's you're only you're not back to the main path before she's dropped back enough to be outside of your um of the protection of your shields and you actually do get hit by a, a by a stone cat for four points of damage okay if i see this i'll slow down and kind of head to the back of her horse well you can notice yeah because she's disappeared she's just gone back far yeah. enough so just Stop. to be yeah just to be out of the, out of the protection of your shields yeah i'll, I'll head further back and kind of protect the back of the horse. Is it not possible for you to protect both the head and the tail? <laughs> well, yes, but I expect you to keep up. I was trying <laughs> to get my head under the shield and then my tail hurt, so I I tried to get my tail and, and then my head hurt and I tried to get my head and it, I just... I, I'm not very good at this. Oh, let's just keep going. Yeah. Okay, so you talk about the tail later. You can keep going. You make it back to the main main um, main pass uh, road, and uh, from there it's a short trip then back out to meet uh, Valin and um, Gerard at the entrance. Galen. Sorry. Galen, isn't it? It's Gerard, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's name. <laughs> it's called Galen now. Maybe it's my name I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was your name. It's, yeah, yeah. The man is bailing it. I was bungee on the end one of it. So you can you can meet up, but you still see no sign of Hadarai. Do you think it's horse got spooked? Um, when you're back back from you saw no traces when you're back either. I didn't see Hadarai after the stones started to fall. Perhaps you went back to try and find a different route. Seems competent. We, we should really wait for him once we're in, in the desert. It's it's unlikely now, you think, after, especially having to go back for a for cat, but now they're alerted, you could get very far into the, into the pass without being showered with even more rocks. Oh, yeah. you, don't, you don't think that's going to be a, a, a very clever thing to be doing. He was a bard, so maybe the gods of good taste find a cool oven. So what, do you, what would you like to do? Are you, going to? are you going to wait for him or are you going to press on? There's no way he could get through that pass now. 
it's likely he's had to turn back, but I've no doubt that he, it, despite being separated, will still serve some purpose, perhaps in delaying the oncoming troops behind us. Indeed. Okay, so as you as you work down the, the slope from the path down towards the, the sandy plain in front of you, there's a small river that uh, meanders its way out of the uh, out of the hills and across the road that you have to ford. It's only a little stream; it's not very deep. Um, but it's uh, it's it's sort of like the last sort of like a uh, last thing you can see that's not dry and and. Uh, sandy and, and barren let's fill up our water canteens there will be no water for some time you're pretty be warm at two would you require assistance i'm fine it is but a scratch <laughs> so you fill up your canteens and uh what which what direction are you going to head now you've basically know the temple you're looking for is in a sort of southwesterly direction, um, but that's really all the sort of indication you've got here. There are no, there's a slight path that leads alongside the mountain range now, but the, the road then sort of like just disappears into the into the into the into the waste in front of you. There's no roads or paths here. Do we have any way of navigating to the temple from the information we had? Well, you had a map, and that shows you effectively it's southwest-ish from the entrance to the pass where you are. If we were at the temple on the map, what landmarks would we see from there? Would we still be able to see the mountain range? Yes. Okay, so it stands to reason then that from the mountain range we could see the temple. Um, well, obviously it's a, smaller, it's a smaller thing to be looking for. Uh, but yeah, go on then, if you want to roll me something well, to... What we could do is perhaps walk along the mountain range and then maybe every four hours just scramble up a bit and have a look Okay. out over the okay. June Sea. You could possibly do that, yes, certainly. Skirting the edge of the desert. Okay, so you're still going to skirt the edge of the desert, you're keeping it inside the side of the mountains. Mm. Uh, I believe... Um, when you uh, when you entered the because you had a break didn't you before you entered the pass and you entered it in sort of midday-ish the pass yeah something like that um so it's taking you the afternoon to traverse the pass and come out on the other side so it's entering early evening now as you set off down the down the mountains down the down the line of mountains so are you going to be looking for somewhere to camp or are you pressing on it's actually the desert is cold at night, it'll be warmer in the shadows of the mountains, but we should move at night and sleep when we can in the uh, in, in the twilight hours. Very good, sounds logical. So you, you're actually going to press on through to the uh, to the into the early evening and, and night time? Yes, we'll move okay. through the night because it's too cold to stay still. Yeah then as the as it starts to warm up again that's when we start to sleep okay so you can uh, you, you start picking your way down this this um this quite rough path it's not a, not a, a road or it is just like a, an animal trail down that runs alongside the, the mountains and um you can travel that for for several hours until it starts to get dark there's no one else around, you don't see anyone, you only hear a few animals and nothing moves out on the, sand, the plain of sand to your left. Okay. Um, are you taking breaks for food or are you, are you just going to keep going? We should keep our strength up, shouldn't we, gentlemen? Yes. Do we actually need to break to eat food or can we just eat to our and boss on a horse? If it's like jerky or something like that, it's just a case of them sticking your goblin chewing, you know. Well, the don't horse... have to get off and make a free course mate will do. The horses need rest and food as well though. And and you, you can you can stop them to, to, to rest the horses and you can you can let them drink from the little stream. You're still trying alongside this little stream. So it's uh it's not a a, a bad plan. 
you've still got water for for a while and um uh, you can travel down the mountains but i mean are, when you say you're going to stop every four hours how are you going to find the temple at night um well first of all just from what we know on the map is it even worth doing at first i mean when are we likely to get close to it um it's going to be perhaps um maybe another day's travel so let's get most of a day's travel done before we start scrambling up the side of mountains okay so you want to sort of like start looking early early morning tomorrow then yeah okay so perhaps climb the mountains or like the uh uh the early morning before it gets too hot yeah okay so you can do that i mean you're traveling single file now and you're you're you travel down you don't say you don't see anybody there's no no animals around and the night is is all sort of like strangely still and quiet um as dawn breaks, uh, you can find yourself um, um, on, still on the trail, um, but the, the little stream seems to have um, disappeared a bit. It, it dis it, during the night, it's, it's wandered off between the rocks and, and, and disappeared from your sight. Okay. So you're now relying on the water that you've actually brought with you. Uh, who's climbing, climbing up the rocks to see See what they can see. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't assume I'm the best climber at all, so. Um, I, I, would, I would assume I'm the worst, so I shall remain here. I mean, I can climb. It's, it's just, uh, you, you, you people are adventurous. You wouldn't be, ever be so presumptuous. Well, I suppose it's going to be leader, I guess. Okay. So um, you're going to you're going to climb up the uh, up the cliff until you get a decent height, and you're going to look out over the, the desert, see if you can see the temple. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let me see. What can we do now? You can need to do me a roll for this climb because it's not. Uh, Obviously, you're, you're looking back as well as you are uh, climbing up. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. You can reach a decent height. Um, you can hold on to the cliff and you can look out over, over the plain, but you can't actually see any sign of the temple. Okay. Right, um, well, I'll head back down again. Okay, so are you? This is where you are. You going to stop any more, or are you going to press on any more today? What time is it now? It's going on now. It's about uh, eight in the morning. Maybe stop for this one. We, we could probably get another couple of hours in. We could look for somewhere to camp in the next few hours. That feels good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you do another couple of hours travelling, um, and you just tend to, you you start to slow down a bit as it uh, as the, as the heat starts to build. <clears throat> but you can find um, some 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 quite high rocks that you can uh, you can camp in the shade of. Uh, there's just there's enough shade there to be able to stretch it on the ground as well. Okay. Uh, the only thing you're going to have problems with is you're not going to be able to get your horses in the shade as well. I was thinking, can we put canvas over them? If you've got canvas, yeah, you could put your blankets or something over them. Yeah, they'd probably be better for them than... The... Just to keep the sun off. Yeah. Yeah, you can rig something up for that then. And you can get yourself a pretty un un uninterrupted rest for... Uh, for the, well, I mean, it says uninterrupted, but it is quite hot, so... It is not the most comfortable rest you've had. Well, I don't know. I quite like sleeping in the sun. Well, yeah, you would, yeah. yeah. It's probably just a shame we've got a radiator, radiator to lie on as well. <laughs> I might just roll out of the shade, actually. <laughs> I might have to sleep. I'll just need to just, just uh, go into a trance state for four hours. So I'm going to sit there. So I'm not going to need any sleep. I'll just trance for four hours and I'll be fine. Okay. So, uh, 
So I'll be, I'll be, uh, I won't be affected at all by the fact that we're sleeping on dirty ground in the middle of the sun. <coughs> so it looks, it sounds like that you can all, you can all get a long rest in oh. while you're actually, uh, actually in the shade of these boulders. Cool. Only with um, a little alcohol. So, what, uh, what, um, you gonna have to watch now is, is your water. So. I don't know how many, how many, how you're gonna, gonna, gonna watch that, but uh, bear in mind you've lost the stream now, okay? Um, how many, um, how many, do you want us to track this? Not enough to track it, but uh, you know, you've got horses to keep watered. Uh, you need to find the, the temple as you know, reasonably soon. Okay. So after after the next eight hours, um, what do you want to do? So it's about it's about six o'clock in the evening. It's the, the main temperature of the day is gone. Have we eaten yet today? We've been up here. You can you can eat while you're resting. It's, just, it's not a problem. There's no there's no danger here that you can see. Like I say you've not seen any animals. Maybe apart from the. Uh, a, a bird, a, a, a buzzard, or something at fairly high sort of altitudes hunting. But apart from that, you've not seen any any movement animal-wise at all. Okay. Well, I'm gonna uh, summon my familiar again. Okay. And uh, as it appears, and I, I see that it's still the mouse. And oh, you uh, you're terrified. <laughs> So it is true that you have the same soul. You must remember everything. I understood that these were these the creatures of your kind are not actually just mouses or cats or whatever, but actually fae of a sort. Is that right, little mouse? Is it fae or? Some kind of, uh, what does the book say here? Yes, it's, um, you're, you're not actually a mouse, a celestial. Oh, a celestial trapped in the body of a mouse, and you remember me eating you. Good. Then you'll do exactly as I ask, won't you? Because I can eat you again. So oh, yes, I suppose Cat now has a never-ending food supply. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes, uh, you, you've got a familiar. Um, uh, and before you start off, are you going to take another look, uh, Valen, up the mountain? I can do. Okay. So if you want to do another roll. Thirteen. Okay, you, um, you you go up a bit higher this time. Um, you have a look around. Uh, you're still not sure that you can see um, any temple. Mm -hmm. But uh, what you can see, you think, heading um, from the west, is, uh, is a, a, a plume of dust. Right. Stands is it, out is quite it, a long way against the blue sky. Is it a plume of dust from horses or wind? Uh, it, it seems like to be a, a, from, from like a, a horses would lead, uh, lead, but it's because um, it's quite narrow. It's not like a it's not like a dust storm or anything. It's not a big storm. Front. Right. So it's quite a narrow trail. So it's horses traveling through the fire or something at speed, possibly. Uh, all right. Okay, I'll climb back down again. So you climb back down, and um, you can sort of uh, set off down the trail again. And the next four hours, the temperature drops off quite quite significantly, and you sort of like take the wrap the blankets and wrap them around you as, as the as the cold weather starts to uh, to to bite in. And uh, four hours later, um, it's it's dark again, but uh, the the moon is up tonight. It's quite clear. Um, did you want to risk going up a cliff again and having a look? There's no point risking somebody skilled like yourself. 
a night time journey up the mountain. Perhaps this is something I should do. I'm more disposable. I agree. <laughs> so I think you, you've got an innate climbing ability, don't I you? I do, yes. So you can climb up the up the cliff. Mm -hmm. uh, when you reach uh, a, a nice little perch, you can look out over the sand and uh, you can see this um, column of, of dust is still hanging in the air and still being produced as it moves towards, uh, not towards you, it's not coming directly at you, but it's coming at an angle across you. Um, but you see a glint out in the sand, um, almost directly opposite you, out, out, out into the desert. Ah, I wish to see that closer. Could be what we're after. It could be. But also this this smoke. It's not got a wide front, has it? It's narrow. It's narrow. It's it's like yeah. It it, it, it you know trails yes. out behind whatever it is. Yes, that could well be something I don't want to meet. Um, I have no way of seeing what's over there. This mouse is too damned slow. Uh, why didn't I get a useful familiar? You're close to being eaten again. Hmm. Right. I'll head back to the party. I see something in the desert and something approaches us along the mountain edge. I don't know what is in the desert, but it might be worth looking at at least while this whatever's approaching us passes. Is, is that what you're going to agree to do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so nice. you, you set out into the desert. Um, it is, like you say, night time. Um, so uh, it's quite it's quite hard to traverse the the, the, the sand. It gets harder and harder as the dunes get uh, taller and taller. Um, are you keeping it on your horses or are you walking them? Uh, actually, once we get onto sand proper, I'm I'm going to get off the horse, and uh, I think for me this might actually be a, a short moment. I, I I might even sort of scoop some up in my paws. And, Give it a long, meaningful look. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you do. There is a certain distance to travel to the to the to the desert proper, but after you say you get off the hard ground, you reach the sand dunes proper, and that that sand still has a bit of the day's warmth in it as well. I as see, you pick it up, I do feel something. Something in me is more alive than it has been for a while. And yet, I hate this place. So, you start heading south, um, leading your horse. Um, who has got the best um, um, survival skill? I plus four. It's two. Anyone else? Not free. Uh, huh. You'll all beat me. <laughs> Everyone's got a great survival skill then. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> what else is there? Uh, someone has done that. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, you... you um, who's got the best skill? Because you roll a dice for me then, please. That'd be me. There you was, Or who was it? Plus four. Yeah. What is it, sorry? Plus four. Plus four. Yeah, okay. Can you can you roll roll your survival skill? Mm -hmm. That's what you get. Ten. Ten. Okay, so um, as you travel, um, you start to uh, you actually start to wander off course as you're going up and down dunes. 
it's quite easily done. That's just the quite the dims are angled, and you do think you're walking up them squarely, but you you are angling off a bit. Um, could you roll me another one, please, sir? Mm -hmm. Rick. Keeps obviously getting to me. Oh, that's better. I got a nineteen. Oh, 19. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you sort of like, um, it occurs to you that this could be happening. And uh, you, you, you stop at the top of a particularly hot dune and um, you sort of like look at the stars, look at the moon, and you recalculate a bit and you, you move your angle a tad. Like a sat nav. Like a sat nav, yes. Um, and uh, you start off down the next dune. Could you roll me one more, please? Mm -hmm. Even better, 21. 21. Okay, so you you obviously have uh, have have a pretty innate skill for for for, for directions. Uh, you, you do, in the end, see uh, rising from from uh, the sand these broken columns, look, look like broken teeth sticking up from the desert, um, and, and they loom up before you. And uh, you you you've steered the group to the temple. Nice. Just as it gets to like uh, maybe midnight. Oh. What you can see is, uh, is stone pillars, right? Quite tall, even though they are broken. Behind that, um, a wall with quite large blocks in. Uh, a big square open doorway that leads into an inner courtyard. Everything seems to be tumbled or fallen statues, fallen blocks. But the, the ground around the actual temple seems to be fairly level and clear of sand. Well, dunes of sand, anyway. Now, um, could, could I just ask, Rorik, uh, I'm not that familiar with your pupils. Uh, do you see well in the dark? Um, sort of. Um... I can see all of this as, as grey, but I can still see it. Uh, where it's dim light, but it's still light, I can see very brightly. Oh, good. So, perhaps, as I am not the strongest person, but I can see quite well at night, uh, perhaps I should escort Sir Bayor. Um, Maybe I walk with him, uh, hold his heart, arm, maybe, and then we could venture inside, and it, you can see in the dark, I can see in the dark. I, I, I believe Valen's people can. It would be an honour to be accompanied. Okay, so you move forward um, to the to the great archway uh, the, through the wall. Uh, inside, there seems to be like a, a stone flag base to the to the to the courtyard. Um, it seems to be pretty empty. Well, certainly looks like a temple. Are you going in? Don't temples usually have writing somewhere? What is this a temple too? Uh, there is some writings on the walls, yes. Oh. Is it a language we can discern? Um, it's in, in the ancient uh, imperial language. I know that language. Many of the magic books I read when I was younger were written in that language. Right, okay. Well... Do you want to make a start on that? I'll um I'll tend to the horses. We've not had a drink in a while. Are you going into the courtyard or are you staying outside the temple? Well, I was rather hoping to read the text that the, that was written outside. Okay, above the great doorway, you can see there's like um there's some scroll work on either side and like a, a big bird, and written underneath that is uh, uh, Sokar the Great, Temple of Light. Sokar the Great Temple of Light. That's... Is, is there anyone familiar with such god? I'm not even sure what pantheon that is. No. I didn't even know there was a, a god of light. I thought it was fire or 
war or something. Serbeo, this is not your pantheon? Uh, out of character? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 none of yours. It's a, it's a it's a dead gone boy. These these are dead gods worshipped by the ancients. Ah. So why would? Oh, that makes sense then that it would have arrived here, but. I was rather expecting it to fall from the sky, rather than be within a temple. Uh, of course, it may have already fallen. It was it what you saw recently, wasn't it? Yeah, you, you did see that recently. You saw a streak yes. of fire in the sky and a big that, explosion. That's true, that's true. Okay. Is there any evidence of an explosion around here, then? Um, not actually, not where you are at the temple, no. It is dark as well. well let's venture in for now right? inside um, as you go through the gates you notice uh, if, as you look behind you on the on the, the the back of the door you've just came through it's like a, a really big round symbol with two people sitting on either side of it and uh, with a bit of a flame at the top of the symbol um, you've noticed from your magic books in the past that it was a common symbol for the sun back along but this looks slightly different to you than, than sun symbols you've, you've seen in the past because there tended to be more flames this only has like one at the top of the symbol uh, well they weren't such good artists back then but there are, are um, innumerable carvings around the walls of the, of the, of the courtyard when we're talking about the past how many years you talking about uh, lots, thousands. Right. I'd like to study the carvings and any relief or, or, or writing. Okay, but as you enter the courtyard, you can hear the little tinkle, little, little drops of water as well. What good, I would expect there to be a well here of some description. And um, you can see uh, t towards some steps that lead up out of the courtyard opposite you, there does seem to be a raised area of stone. And uh, when you look in that, you see it is actually a pool of water. Pretty clear and uh, it looks fresh. Mm. It's quite odd that this thing is intact and in such good condition in an in a, in a old temple that's this ruined. I'd like to study the carvings, if I may. Sure. Okay. Um, you, uh, you, you. As you look at the walls, you see it's like the creation myth around the walls, and it talks of um, um, a black sun and a white sun, and the way that uh, there was a big battle between the two, and um, the black sun was banished. Um, and the light took over. Huh. Isn't it ironic that our stone was black and that was the one here all along and it's the white sun that presumably has just landed to earth? If, of course, it's a metaphor for the stones. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Primitive people didn't even worship. They were the realised they were the ones that were banished in their own worship. Yes. So, are you gonna? Are you, I take it, um, Rorik's gonna water the horses, like you said. Can I test the water first? You can. How are you testing it? With my poisonous kit. I'm oh. guessing <laughs> by testing it for poisons. You're not. You're not gonna give Gerard a cup or something. <laughs> no. No. I'm gonna. Yeah, must be a way of telling a poison or something by testing it because otherwise you know okay well i mean you you can smell it it doesn't it seems it seems fine um if you really want if i can just taste it and you know if it is poisonous i'll just get a bit of a stomach ache or die 
Well, I won't die. It's unlikely to be poisonous. It's more likely it's just not pure. Okay, so is is Rourke, are you going to try it, or are you going to test it, Jay? You might have to make your mind up. Well, if, you want to, if you want to drink it, then let. I have resistance to poison, so I'm, you know, I've, I've done things like this before mm -hmm. uh, in character. So I'm happy to just sort of take a little sip and. Okay, so you you take a little sip, and it is quite it is quite cool and fresh. It's very refreshing for you after that after that walk, even in the, even in the night time does it. But do you think it's the best? You're the best person to test something that's poisonous if you're resistant to poison. If the rest of us aren't. Well, like I said, if it is poisonous, then I'll still know. But I'll just get some oh, right, okay. stomach ache. It's not right, like okay. I'm completely immune to it. Right. Okay. As far as you can tell, it's fresh water. Well, it certainly tastes all right. It tastes really good, actually. I'm surprised that it's not more dirty. Why? It's probably fed by an underground stream. I mean, does it does it look like it's kind of flowing a little bit, or is it just sort of standing? It 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 is. There's a bit of a bit of a, a small like wave on it, and it almost seems like it's it's there's something bubbling up in the middle of the of the big round thing. This is probably maybe fifteen feet across this pool, and it's okay. probably a couple a couple three feet deep. Seems yeah, seems fine. Right, it's. Uh... Fill up my water skins, I guess. As you as you wander, as um, Cat was wandering around the walls, um, you come across actually, Cat. You come across um, a skeleton of a man wearing a, a breastplate with a sword lying next to him. On the relief or on the floor? On the floor. Oh, well, that's a surprise. How old's that skeleton? That one's going to be about 20, 25 years old. Hmm. Well, he was early. <laughs> By a generation. Um... Is there any other exits from this courtyard? There is one um, opposite the entrance where you came in, which is steps up to another opening. Okay. Um, well, if the stone is here in some manner, it's likely up those stairs. Um, uh, Surveyor, do you do... do, do you, I don't know if it's a... but did you want to take time to do some kind of service with this dead person who died in a temple? I don't know if that's something in your religion or not. Dead person? I shall approach and uh, examine the body. Okay, you examine the body. Um, you notice that it is, um, uh, he's carrying the sword of someone from your order. The sword lying next to the body. I shall... Job will drop open. This is what uh, was it? Well, you, you actually, as you examine the body, you notice there's no damage to the shield, there's no damage to the armor, and there doesn't appear to be any damage on the bones you can see. Okay, is there any identification on um, it? There's not really, a lot of it is rotted away. And the decoration on the shield, was that sound blasted off? No, no, um, the, the shield was painted, it's dulled, but um, it does seem to be like a, like a rearing lion. I recognise it. Well, you, you recognise it that um, there was a family in your order um, a long time ago that uh, went on a mission and never came back. Um, and. Uh, that was that they were known as the lions and um because they had a lion on the shield hmm well i shall I shall stand and push my helmet back slightly scratch my head um, this man was one of my order uh, 
I'm of a, a famous family known as the Lions who came on the mission. And it would appear that we've found him a failed in my book. I know not what mission he was he was on, but I can only guess. Must have something to do with the one we're on. Um, but to answer your original question, yes, I uh, I must give him a proper burial. I I'm not much help with digging, but I suppose I could try. No, um, Gerard and I will, will deal with it. Thank you for the offer. Okay, I'll sit with you and be your eyes. Thank you. Okay, so are you, you leaving the courtyard to do this? Back into the desert? Does it look like there's some kind of burial area in or around this temple? Um, no, it doesn't. Not not inside, because it's all stone inside. Oh. Well, yes, then, in that case, we'll, uh, between us, we shall wrap him up. Probably in a blanket or whatever's there. Yeah, I mean, you you have blankets, obviously. Um, carry him out on his shield. You can carry, yes, you can carry him out on his shield. Yes, um, it rattles a bit. That echoes in the courtyard as you as you carry him out. But uh, yeah, it's quite easy to dig in the sand outside. Maybe you can the shield into it as a headstone. What's the rest of you doing during while this is happening? Um, I'd be refilling up the water. Um, satchels, mm -hmm. uh, making sure the horses have got plenty. Okay, baby. Um, I'm just going to be sitting on the edge of a um, a pool, from the water skin, and uh, we have something to eat. Okay, so uh, if if uh, is that. Is that all you're going to do now, or are you going to rest for the rest of the evening, or are you going to are you plan on doing something else? I would um, say we might be better off going inside and resting within that building. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, if we can even, um, you know, get a little fire going inside, but it'll be cooler in there as well for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can do that. You can. Um, uh, go inside quite easily. There's no doors or anything on there. So, you, who's going up the steps and going inside first? I, I'd oh. be concerned about lighting a fire at the moment. We did see something moving across oh, yeah, in the foothills of the mountains, and we don't know who that was. Okay. All right. Well, for now, we can we can leave it. Maybe start a fire when the sun comes up. In in fact, it's just possible if the uh, if our pursuers on the way down here, the Emperor's men. If they'd gone a different way, and if they'd somehow made good time, it could be them. It could also be something far worse. Would you be able to keep an eye out while I go in and check the temple? I think you might need my ability to not just see well, but read. But then nobody else out here. Well, uh, Galen, how far can you see in the dark? Well, uh, 60 feet. Can you keep watch for a moment outside? Yeah. I'll let you go. I'll ask, how tall is this building? How tall is this temple? Um, the walls, uh, the walls of the courtyard are maybe twenty feet high. Uh, to the roof. And there's no roof where you're currently staying. The, the temple bit you're going to go be going into is is uh, the, the 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 floor of that, and because you have to go up steps, is probably about ten feet higher than where you are. And then the temple beyond that is about another twenty feet high again. So is there only one floor? Is it two floors? You can't tell from here. I climb to the roof then. Is it a flat roof? Uh, it, it, it's pretty smooth sided. You're going to have trouble climbing to the roof. You're going to need to make a good roll for that. Uh, 
you know, you keep watch on the roof. You can climb, you can climb the walls of the courtyard and be 20 feet off the ground here. Yeah, I don't want to sit on the wall. Um, oh, I could do it, but I don't... Yeah, 20 feet should be all right. There's a big, long, flat stretch, isn't there, towards this temple? Yes, the area outside is strangely clear of actual sand dunes. Yeah, so anything approaching us, you'd be able to see it. So if I climb the wall, then mm -hmm. I'll only be 10 foot away from the roof. No, the courtyard wall is 20 feet high. The, yeah. the temple is 10 feet higher than the base you're on, and then it's another 20 feet from there. All oh, right. So yeah, so it'll be 10 feet. Hold on. Yeah. 10 feet. Yeah, 20 feet more. Hold it. No, one second. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll climb the wall. Yeah, okay, you climb onto the wall and you can keep watch. Um, Rory, can you, are you going up first? Uh, yeah, I'll go up with Cap. Uh, are you stealthing it or are you going on uh, sword weapons drawn or? I would, I would go, I'll go weapons drawn. Okay. Um, not stealthy, no, but. You, uh, like... you wander up, you walk up the steps to the, uh, to the open door and everything is really dark inside. You can, uh, as you pass through the opening, um, Cat sort of stops and uh, wanders around, uh, just sort of like starts looking at the, um, at the, the, the writing on the walls around the door. And um, uh, as you pass through, you can see lots of little mounds on the floor inside. What, what, what are the mounds made of? Um, you have to go closer to uh, to have a look, but are, are you going in? How far are you going in? Are you stopping in the doorway or are you going straight in and having a look, Rorik? Uh, well, the fact that Cat is suspicious of these mounds... Do you think it's still safe to go in? Do, do they look like kind of soil or something? No, they don't look like soil, no. They look like piles of debris. What's it smell like in here? Um, it smells fine. It doesn't, there's no sort of like rotting or, or smell or anything like that. It's, it does smell, you know, quite clean. A bit dusty, maybe. Okay. I'll start moving in. Okay, um, you get to the first mound, which is uh, just in a, in a, it's just out of the, um, the, the, the light that the doorway is casting. But so it's in quite a pool of little, little of darkness. Um, are you going to tip it with your foot or are you going to touch it with a sword? I would probably do it with the sword, so sort of as arm reach away as possible. Um, and there's a clatter as a part of armor falls apart onto the floor, mixed in with a load of bones. Oh, let me jump a little bit. Yeah, it's quite loud. It echoes around the little the little um, chamber you're in. Can I just have a quick look at the... Sh is, is there a shield and is there a similar thing on it? There is, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to drag... I'm going to sort of tug on the dwarf to come back out the door. Oh, oh, okay. What? What's the matter? Uh, uh, close the door to the temple. There's, there's no door, it's just open. Oh, okay. Um, it's just... If that was a dead person in a suit of armour that collapsed to the floor when you knocked it, there's a good reason that it was standing. Also, what killed these things? I put it to you, it is better to go in there with everyone and with enough light for them all to see. But it was just a mound of bodies, wasn't it? It's there's, there's sort of like small mounds on the floor all, all over the place in there. Well, quite a few of them. And the body dropped out of the one I touched. Yeah, the, the armor sort of fell apart. It sort of rattled the, the, the breastplate and the back plate sort of just came apart onto the floor and the bones that were held inside just sort of like collapsed. 
it just made that metal on stone as it fell apart. Okay. It wasn't standing, it was lying. It's just... When you see bones wearing armour, they either tend to come alive or... or there's a reason that they have no visible wounds and... Mm, I, I see what you mean. I would rather see what we're against. And if they are to come alive, I'd rather be accompanied by all of our friends than just us two. Is there any more writing in that room? Yes, there's a lot more writing in here as well. Is it possible you can see any of that cat? You can, you can see some around the doorway, but then obviously it stretches off around the room then. Um, but yeah, you can see this is more about the return. It, it is documenting the, the return. Um, If um, we do need to know that, perhaps if we get everyone, we can go around the room and read what it has to say. Okay. But I'm just very concerned. Something killed the people in this room, and we can't see all of the room. No, but we can't hear anything at the moment, can we? No, you can't hear anything. No. Not since the uh, not since the echo of the uh, of the crashing armor died away. No. I'm. Um, I'm thinking. Everything. Sorry. Everything is just back to as eerily still as it was before. I'm thinking back to what Roderick said. Um, you know, in his sort of mad tongue. It's quite possible that nothing needed to kill them because they killed themselves. I, I don't know if this Roderick is not somebody I recall. No, you, you weren't there. He was somebody who came here once before and made it out. Oh. I sought to find him before we came here. Well remembered. So, yes, you're, you're, you're right. Um, it's quite possible he was telling the truth. Or some of what he was saying has some sort of truth in it. So, yes, let's wait until morning. Uh, what like, did he state. say? Well, he... I don't remember exactly what he said out of character, but uh, he, he mentioned... I think, did he mention things coming out of a wall? He said that it came through a wall. He said yeah, um, wall. they they they've been there for um, a couple of days. Um, they've made camp inside the, the, the temple, um, and then after a couple of days, suddenly they were attacked. And the first man died without a sound where he was standing. Um, and then it was everyone was screaming and running, and people were just dying, and there was just no stopping it. And he managed to to run away. In fact, let's not camp inside the hotel. It's not a hotel. <laughs> Temple. <laughs> Temple. I'm... I am inclined to agree. Never mind. We do not wish to inadvertently anger an ancient god. False though it may be. So, are you going to make camp outside the temple? Yes. I haven't really got a choice. I'd rather take on some the Emperor's men than something in there. Okay. So I mean that that is quite simple for you to just take your horses and go outside the temple and, and camp. Um, are you going to restrict any more explorations for tonight until till the next day, or? Yeah, absolutely. I I don't want to go into that room until we can see what the hell is in there. Okay. <clears throat> Um, yeah, the, so you, the bodies can wait. We, we wait need to twenty-five years. They can wait a while longer. Yeah, we need to make sure we don't anger whatever thing sets this temple off. 
need to understand. So you can um, you can make up camp quite quite easily. Are you setting watches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought I already was watching. Yeah, yeah you're watching for now. And as I only need four hours of sleep, I might as well just stay on watch. So you can take it over for four hours as well. Okay. Well, I mean, it's sort of like midnight when you reach the reach the temple. So well, obviously you can you can you can rest in a bit while it's still very cool in the morning. Um, but the day dawns bright and hot as usual. It's not long before it's uh, it's starting to be really quite oppressive now. The most of the courtyard is in is in full sunlight. Um, it just makes the water look even more inviting and, and light and bubbly. Um, the the room on uh, at the top of the steps is actually you can see the seat, the sun streaming in now, lighting up a couple of the uh, the mounds that are on the floor inside. Yeah. Okay. So we'll um, take a quick break there. Will we um, before we go into the <laughs> into the temple? Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back, folks. Oh, folk. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Why is it so much cooler out here? Computers. Yes, but it's normally cooler in my room than it is in yours. I have also got the window open. I don't know that. I put the door open, maybe it's allowing me to smoke in it.
trying to break the toilet. I'm sorry, darling. Are you trying to break the toilet? emailed Andrea just to see first of all the twenty ninth is actually available. Mm -hmm. Cool. One percent battery is lasting a while. Yeah it has. <laughs> oh god I forgot to mute the stream again. Hello stream, you can hear me, Hangouts can't. <sighs> I always your do mic that. On. The, the, I forgot to mute XSplit. Oh dear. So they probably heard the toilet flush. Oh, that's what the message was apparently. Yeah, I imagine so. Uh, this whole rebroadcasting thing, rather than doing it into it. Fuck you, YouTube. Ah, uh, the like worst. On route. The worst was when I um, I I used to have a Bluetooth headset, and I oh, left, yeah. I, I left that on once as I went to the loo, so you could actually hear me trickling. Wasn't. Wasn't ideal. Yeah, totally. well, I, I was muted, Ronald. I muted. I muted Hangouts. <laughs> More technical problems. Yes, absolutely a technical problem. Nothing to do with us at all. <laughs> so the problem is, because, like, after years and years, of you just mute hangouts and that's the broadcast muted as well and now i've got to get used to this thing where like on a different screen is this other window that has its own mute thing just for my microphone <laughs> oh. and i've clicked myself occasionally so that i've been on screen every now and then <laughs> It's just not one easy solution, is there? Oh, uh, no. Ronnie says that they heard trickling because our, my mic is really sensitive. So, you know how last week I was apparently too quiet and now I'm too sensitive? Oh no, this will be my mic because mine oh, yeah, yeah. wasn't it's muted on the stream, so... Mm. Mm. Well, Ronnie, everybody has to pee. <laughs> That's true. We are all back. Down. Oh, so we are. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, GM. Hello. <laughs> um, yes. So the next day dawns, and it's uh, as I said, it's it's pretty hot. The courtyard is in pretty much in full sunlight, and uh, the steps uh, in, uh, behind the fang, uh, the the pool are. Um, uh, definitely in full sunlight and the doorway is now uh, open to the sun and it's uh, lighting quite a lot of the inside of this, this chamber at the top of the steps. Um, are you proceeding directly to that chamber or...? Could I, could I just ask, uh, just for uh, purposes of, 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 of maintenance on the character sheet, did we long rest just then? Uh, being about... yes, probably you did. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Shall yeah, we head on in, guys? Yeah. Stand, currently, you're standing at the bottom of the steps by the by the big pool. 
all in a very adventurous line. Oh, okay. My priority is to get the bodies out and buried this morning. Okay. Just before we do that, I something killed these people, and I think it would be prudent to understand if it was the temple itself before we go disturbing anything in the temple. I think it might be an idea to at least read what is on the walls before we move anything. Okay. I'll wait here. Okay. Stand just inside the threshold. So you, you, you walk up the steps in a line in a very sort of like superhero marching sort of fashion. <laughs> you reach the top of the top of the steps and the, the, the big open doorways in front of you now and you can see the back wall now and you can see another opening in that back wall. And you can see these piles, which now obviously are um, cloak clover or, or armor clover bundles uh, around the around the room. Um, as you walk in, you can count maybe um, eight small bundles and a few large sorry mounds and a few larger mounds um, that seem to be covered in a, a certain amount of cloth. Um, What are you going to do? Are you going to start reading straight away? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. So as you come in, you, you, you turn to one side or the other and you start reading. And uh, this is more about the, 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 the return uh, of, of uh, Sokar the Great. And uh, basically, you go around about halfway around and you've, you've been the fact that um, Sokar the Great will be coming back to... Um, to um, make the light of the black sun shine again upon the world okay. and the temple the temple will be guarded by the high priests until his return hmm. well that suggests that the high priests are possibly still here in some fashion You say I've got halfway around the room to determine that. What's on the other half? <laughs> the other half um, uh, sort of details after the return and the, and the battle there will be for Sokar to, to dominate the world. Hmm. I think it's as we thought with these stones. They're a bit powerful. And it's not necessarily the person wielding them that takes control. Uh, is anyone investigating the, the mounds in the room? Uh, Once the reading touch been done. Sorry, you know, I missed that. Uh, I interrupted Jason. Right. Go on, Jason. No, I was just saying, I'll, I'll look but not touch. I think Sir Bale should be the one to actually uh, disturb the mounds, if at all. Um, but it, it's my feeling that whatever guards this temple hasn't been revealed to us through these writings, but the writings suggest that the high priests, whatever they are, they could still be guarding, or at least were 25 years ago. On, on sort of closer inspection, the mains <clears throat> turn out to be sort of five uh, armoured men and five smaller um, sort of bundles, uh, not armoured. Um, and you, you sort of think that these are possibly going to be the squires for the, for the, for the men. Uh, okay. You can also find... These bodies haven't just fallen where they were, though, have they? Unless, they, or did they fall in a fighting in a circle back to back? No, they're just they're just like uh, just all over the place. Some of them just fell where they were standing. Okay. Some were trying to make it to the door. Some are just running in, in blind panic, but they're just falling mm -hmm. to the ground. Um, you can actually find uh, the remains of what were, was was a campfire and their belongings. It looks like they were camping. They were in this room. Mm 
Yeah, so one by one, gather them up and take them out to the makeshift burial ground. Okay, which you can do. It's uh, it's going to take you quite a while, but you, um, uh, in the end, you, you take out, well, you've already got one body out, you take out the other ten bodies. And you uh, you have a whole ceremony and you, you clamp shields for the actual, for the men. Um, and, and whatever it is you can find for the, uh, for the for the for the for the squires, and you lay the, the swords on the on the mound of the the, the um, grave, and you can return back into the temple to your uh, to the to your friends. Right. Now let's see if we can find this priest. There was a, 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 another archway opposite, yes? Yeah, there is another archway opposite, yes. There's a small corridor that lies behind, beyond that. Let's venture in. Okay, this corridor, there's no writing in this corridor, but it is covered with uh, pictures engraved into the walls. And it shows a battle between, between the gods. And off of these, there's a there's a door at the at the end of this corridor, is, and two halfway down the other side. Is this god? Um, sorry, what was it called again? Sokar. Sokar. Is Sokar depicted on these reliefs? Uh, there's no, no there's none of these characters on these reliefs named, but you would probably think one of them one of them were yes. Well, I would imagine it's the most impressive looking one. Yeah. Uh, and is it a humanoid? It is sort of humanoid, but it has a very animalistic head to it, but nothing nothing like an animal you've seen. Perhaps a scorpion? It's not a scorpion, it's, um, it's it has quite a big, big leering mouth with quite sharp teeth in. Um, the ears are quite large and pointed. The head is bold, um, and it seems quite um, out of proportionally large to the body. Okay, uh, what's at the other end of the corridor? Okay, there's a door at the other end of the corridor, and halfway down there are two doors on either side of the corridor. Oh boy. The two doors halfway down are obviously each other. Okay, what manner of door are they? Um, they seem to be uh, brass doors, uh, bronze doors in the sky. And they send, they seem to be, they're quite highly uh, uh, decorated as well. Just uh, check these out before I carry on. Okay, which one are you going to go in? And, uh, and all, all of you are inside the temple now. I'll start on the wall. Are you still keeping watch? Yeah, I've never, I never went into the temple. Okay. Oh. So there's only three of you inside there. So oh, so. Four. Um, Gerard, yeah. Yeah. Five, I've got a mouse. Any more? Any more? What have you brought with you? So, which. Which door are you going to open up, left or right, or the one straight down in front of you? Is there any difference in the decorations on the door? There is a slight, it's all the same style, but there are only slight decorations, uh, differences, sorry. Is there any... Very, sorry. No, no, sorry, I interrupted you. It's, it's quite, um, the, the differences are quite sort of low-key differences. What I was going to ask was, is there any difference to, like, are there any sort of grooves in the stone floor or any kind of evidence to show that a door is used more? No. No. Okay. Well, when I realise that Bailey isn't with us, I'll go back out. Put it on the wall. Are you coming with us? 
Well, I'm assuming you didn't want to be uh, trapped in there. If the guy, these other guys turned up. Okay. I mean, it's, I presume it's not that big a building, really, is it? Um, it seems to be going back and back as you as you move into it. Uh, it's quite. Uh, I mean, from what you can see outside, only look at the courtyard, but these buildings seem to seem to be going um, further back in since you thought. So you're saying it's bigger inside than it is outside? No, it's just that you, you never saw the extent of where you, you, where you oh, right. the direction you approach. You never saw the extent of the actual uh, temple. Right. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. I would think it's wise for us not to be uh, basically uh, taken from behind. If you like, because it looks like we can be trapped in here if we, uh, if these all these mates turn up. When there's a hell of a lot more of them than there is of us, suddenly appear out of nowhere, and we're trapped inside this temple, having to fight our way out. It'd be best if one of us is outside, just in case we do see something, and then I can go in and warn the others that this is going to happen. So we don't prepare. Yep. Well, we're unaware. <coughs> what, so what do you what do you want to do? Which door do you want to open? Go back in. Um, turn to the one on the left. Okay. So I could swing it open and have a sword ready. Yes, you can push it open, and uh, this it is quite dark in this room because the sunlight does not reach into here. Um, so you can actually make it very much so very aura. but uh Rorik and cat inside you can see um in the middle of the floor there seems to be a large stone uh, sarcophagus just in the middle of the corridor no in the middle this is the room the left hand oh, right, okay. side room okay, you push the the corridor. okay i think we found the high priest is it quite an ornate coffin it is quite an ornate coffin, yes. There's a lot of symbol, 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 symbology around the actual base of it. And carved on the top is the is the same um, sun with one flame symbol as you saw at the gateway. Cat, look, there's more writing around the sides. I'll, I'll try to read it from where I am. Yeah, you can you can actually see High Priest, um, but the name is, is a bit obscure from where you are. Is there anything written on the walls? There's, uh, the walls are covered in, in writing. It's going to take quite a while to read all of that, and it's floor to ceiling. Can I just skim a little bit, get a sense of what's there? It seems to be a personal history of the man in the uh, sarcophagus, and the things he'd done, the great things he'd done in the service of Sokar. Okay, I want to read the start and I want to read the end and I want to see if I can date it. Okay, uh, so how are you going to think you can date that? Uh, well, if it's talking about his life, does it give a year of birth and a year of death? Um, it doesn't give a year as such, no. It will say uh, in the summer of the, the, the green sun. Um, this guy, this guy was born, um, and it, uh, it then um, basically gives uh, details of when he was taken into the priesthood at a very young age, six. Um, his progress through the the temple, um, and his rapid rise up through, even to the point of um, killing off several of his competitors to make it to uh, high priest. Oh, let's celebrate that. Um, do I know from? My knowledge of my limited knowledge of history i mean this is obviously ancient history um can i the green summer of the green sun does that mean anything to any of us um you if you could do me arcana have you got arcana uh that's better than my history oh natural 20. oh okay Ooh. that's good uh, being from this part of the world, you seem to recollect a very small snippet of information that um, it was called the Green Sun, um, and the Sun of the Green Sun, because the, the desert was actually green at one point. Ah. Okay, and that was what measured in the thousands of years? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Now we can just skip to the end. Um, okay, so... So they... last entry killed 25 knights of <laughs> knee or whatever. <laughs> no, it, it ends with his death um, um, many, many hundreds of years before the Empire even started. Okay. Um, and he was entombed here um, to await the return of Sokar as a, as a loyal and dedicated servant. Anywhere in there, does it have this kind of standard greeting of this religion, like you know, praise Sokar and his, or praise the return, or something like that? Yes, it can do. There'll be a couple of prayers in amongst the writing. Okay, how do the prayers tend to end? There'll be it'll be praise Sokar and the dark sun, uh, his light will shine again. Okay, I shall say praise Sokar, the dark sun, his light will shine again, and close the door. <laughs> I think I know what's in the other one. Should we go straight ahead? Um, yes. You haven't just woken him up, have you? No. No, that, that was that their way of ending a prayer. Uh, it seemed the right thing to do. So you come to the end of the corridor? You said you thought you knew what was in the other one? Yeah. <laughs> well, th the other thing that killed all of your compatriots. <laughs> Save it while last there. So, what are you going to do? Are you going to go to Spain or want to go in the other one, or are you going to go follow the rest of them down to this other door? So is there um, this other door? Is it? Um, is there any gaps? There's no gaps, no, because it swings inwards and it fits against a, a stone okay. um, doorway. No, no lock, key lock, or anything like that. No, there's no locks. Yeah. Okay. I I, I suggest we go straight ahead. I don't want to risk disturbing them both. Um, what you got? Go on, lay down one. Okay, so you you can you reach the door without any trouble, and you are going to push it open. Okay, so as you push it open, uh, you are in um, a large chamber. The light is coming from slit windows that are quite high, set quite high in the wall, uh, and there's a line of two pillars down this down this big room. And at the far end is is uh, an altar, and above that, carved into the wall, is a big is a big circular emblem again, uh, but this time it's actually painted black. Let's go yeah, I've got my sword drawn. Be very careful. I expect we'll have two rather powerful undead on us soon. <clears throat> Are you doing in? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But careful. Okay. So. So you can go in, um, and your your footsteps echo quite loudly in this big place, and it is feeling very eerie and oppressive in here. What are you going to do? Are you walking up to the altar, or are you? Yeah, approach the altar. Okay, as you approach the altar, it looks very similar to the sarcophagus you saw in the in the. Um, in the, the other antechamber, but uh, it's it's uh, there's no name of uh, there's no high priest name on this one. It is all about uh, Sokar the Great, and uh, this is uh, the the, the and this is the temple of the of, of the, uh, the Black Sun. Okay, if that's the corpse of Sokar, or it has within it the thing we're here to find, but that would make no sense. Why would it land inside a sarcophagus? 
the, the roof to this room, it's not sort of designed for any for a, a meteorite or orb to enter through, is it? It's not, no. No, it's not. Can we tell us about what like... the... I'm oh, sorry. Has, has this room been disturbed recently? Uh, it doesn't seem it's dis... It doesn't seem like it's... Uh been disturbed there doesn't seem to be anyone here for quite a while uh there, there is there's some dust and sand on the floor and there doesn't seem to be any footprints around okay. what's the uh the black sun made of can we tell um if you if you go up and investigate it closely yeah, yeah it I'm seems right. to be um, um a black stone that's been embedded into the wall somehow okay Is it possible to take it out? It's huge. Okay. It's gonna weigh it's gonna weigh tons. Okay. I realise now I've made an error. Oh no, I have it memmed. I'll do that. Um I'm gonna utter some dark words uh from powers that have long since left this world and uh, in so doing gain the ability to see magic I cast detect magic okay you cast detect magic um, the sun on the wall glows slightly but very very faintly okay but nothing else no, nothing else in the room glows yeah, don't touch that. Um, I might do something with that in a moment. I just want to, while this spell is up, I just want to have a quick look back into the sarcophagus room and see if anything there is magical. Okay, so you, you, you push open the door to the sarcophagus room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, previously, you know, the, the walls were covered in writing, very much like, say, an Egyptian tomb. Mm. Yeah. That is all, all that lighting is, written, is lit up and the, the sarcophagus is glowing like a, like a, like a red hot. Um, does it look like this is magic that's activating or does it just like that is just magic and... That is just magic, yeah. Just ma okay, okay, yeah, that's, that's definitely what killed the men. Um, okay. Uh, I have a pearl necklace that I took from Wasserface. You do? Yes, I am going to remove one pearl from that necklace. And somewhere in here I should have it memorised. Ah, blast. Is it a ritual? Yes! Okay. Um, this is, I'm going to have to cast this as a ritual, so it will take me ten minutes, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but, uh, I'm going to cast Identify, and I want to identify the black stone, so that should tell me essentially what it does. Um, learn its properties and how to use them, and whether it requires attunement to use, and how many charges it has, if any. Okay. Um, um, you learn whether any spells are affecting the item or what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn the spell which created it. You, um, were, were you sorry? Were you talking about the, the, the sun in, above the... Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, you learn that is magic. It is some form of portal. Oh. That you don't believe was used to communicate with Sokar the Great. Okay. So it's a portal that allows voice to travel through. Or sound. Yes. Take off your shoes. Yeah, Take but, off oh, your shoes. But you do, you do know how to, you, this, you do know how to use it though, don't you, you said? Yeah, it's... There is a ritual to activate. Okay. Alright, um, so I should 
Although I can't learn a spell, I will learn what that ritual is, so like, what its name is, or something. Okay. Um, um, as, you, as you study the, 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 the symbol uh, more, okay, mm. so you've got the black sun, there's a black stone in the, in the middle of this, this in the, planted in this wall above the, above the altar. There's the black flame, there's the flame on top of the thing. Okay, mm. and sitting beside it again are the two these two figures you saw previously in the in the other antechamber, but on these two figures they're actually holding their hands out something like that. Okay. On either side of the of the black sun. Now you seem to remember seeing something like this, way back when you were escorting Cassandra, sorry, Caressida to Athwaite. Okay. Um, I think it might be an idea to blow another pearl and spend another ten minutes and then try to identify on the sarcophagus to see what activates what's inside, to see how it works. Okay, um, yeah, okay, you can do that. Um, you get the impression that there is something inside. Well, I, I know. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know how this actually... Uh... Okay, so how the spell works. All right, so if it is a magic item or some other magic imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use them, whether it requires attunements and how many charges it has, if any. You learn... Okay, it's not, it's not an item inside. Okay. I, I know that. But you it's, can... it's... Okay, if you instead... Oh, I would have to touch a creature to, to do it to a creature. But then I could learn what spells are affecting it, if any. Um, I don't think I want to open the sarcophagus and touch what's inside to do it to the creature. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we won't spend another ten minutes. We'll, we'll, we'll just go with the... We'll just go with that. We'll go with the, okay. the, 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 the staticky talky. What's everyone, what's everyone else doing? Because I think, Vega, what are you doing? Um, I guess I'll be heading in. Okay, you can see Cat just coming out of this side chamber. Okay. So what are you going to say then? Are you going to... Oh yeah, well, yeah, I'll go in as soon as I see, well, one of them at least, but not all of them. So, yeah, we're going to have company in a little bit, a few minutes. What? A few minutes? Yeah. What kind of company? Yeah, the bad kind, I think. How do you I've, know? I've hidden the horses, uh, so they shouldn't see those. So they won't know we're here. So we have a surprise on them. Right. I suggest we get into the the rear antechamber at the back here. Um, so, I have two ideas, they're both terrible. Any better plans? Okay, so from now, you're standing in the corridor at the moment. Um, you can start to hear noise from outside the courtyard. Yeah, I want to go to the room at the back where everyone else is, so we're all together in that back room with the... Okay. <clears throat> I've got, um, on the corridor, on the way out, I've got a handful of caltrops. Okay. Okay, so you can go into the back back temple room and shut the door. Into the altar room. Hmm. Okay, so you shut the door. There's no other way out of this apart from these high slit walls that you, that you know of. Um, when you say shut the door, what sort of door is it? It's a bronze door. So there's no way of seeing what's coming up the corridor? There'll be no fish at the door now. Can we not shut the door? Can we just close it slightly? Yeah, let's see that I put So I can keep an eye on what's going up the corridor. Yeah. Because if, if it's going to be dark in it, which I presume it is, because I don't know if there's any light coming through anywhere, but the dark vision, I need to see what's coming. Okay, so you can you can leave a 
sliver of the door open if you want to. You can you can look through. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep an eye on the corridor. Uh, you, see, in the, uh... you see in the far outer door um, a very tall, thin figure appear up the steps. Just obviously, as it comes up, you see the head first, then the shoulders. Uh, it stands in the doorway, silhouetted against the bright sun outside, and it seems to be very tall, very very thin. Um, it's quite got um, um, a big round head on it and a big flowing cloak out behind it but the cloak is quite is quite thin and the light shines through it so you can see the, the general shape of the body and it, and it looks around and then, two, okay. then two or three more appear next to it so these aren't the, the knights then they're not the knights that you know they would be around shields they'd be you know a lot sort of the, these these are taller than the knights would be. So, I wouldn't have noticed that when they, when I saw them coming from a distance. If they're wearing shields and armor, they wouldn't have suddenly clipped them off them. That would be an indication that they were wearing shields and armor. They were quite a way away when you saw them first. Right. Okay. Anyway. Uh, right. I'll just say. Uh, well, they're not coming in. Standing at the door. And they seem to, and they seem to talk amongst each other. And then there's a cry from outside, and they turn and uh, and uh, disappear back down into the courtyard. Cat, can you send your mouse? Mouse, you have a choice. Go out there or be eaten. And then come back and tell me. Oh, you can't speak. <laughs> oh, can't you? Can't you talk to it at all? Well, it can understand me. It can nod its head and shake its head. But those kind of interrogations can take a while. <laughs> then you, you got any sort of telepathic link to this animal? Well, um. Let me see. Uh, it obeys my commands. Um, has the physical stats of a mouse. Uh, no, it's not telepathic at all. It is just a mouse with a celestial spirit inside. Okay, so you're going to send it outside? Um, Mouse, go out there, see if they're dying to something, and then if they are, come back and nod your head. If they aren't dying to something, shake your head. If they're, if, if they're dying, nod your head. Um, yeah, if they're fighting something, nod your head. Um, okay. If they're not fighting something, shake your head. The mouse goes off, and it's a few minutes before uh, it comes back. Okay. And uh, it nods its head. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, is the thing that they're fighting human? And it shakes its head. Is the thing that it's fighting undead? It shakes its head. Is the thing that it's fighting a scorpion? It shakes its head. Is the thing that it's fighting <laughs> the same species as me? Not its head. Well, no, actually, no, sorry. Shakes his head, sorry. Is the things that are doing the fighting the same species as me? The, the other... nods, it, nods his head. Yes. Okay, I, I, I wondered if that was the case. Let's hope they lose. <laughs> what? So, what? There's more tabaxi up there? There are tabaxi fighting something else out there, but I'm unsure what. Well, don't you want to help them? Do you, do, do you know them? They're not my clouder. I don't I have do. a clouder. Oh. So they wouldn't be friendly to you. Is the Empire friendly to nations on its border? So you hear a few more cries from the courtyard and then it goes quiet. Well, good news. Whatever survived is going to be a 
wounded. <laughs> All very powerful. What are you going to do? Uh, like I said, I've got two ideas. They're both bad. I'm going to continue to watch see uh, what happens. What are these ideas in cap? Uh, idea number one is if something gets close to us and it looks powerful, we try and trigger the mummy's awakening or whatever's in the sarcophagus. And idea two is that we speak to Sokar. Ask him where this bloody orb is. Of the dark sun. Well, we're going to have to do that anyway. Sorry? I'm just going to have to do that anyway. Uh, quite likely. Um... So, Jay, you noticed that uh, uh, one of these that one of these people, um, possibly the same one as last time, has come back to stand in the doorway of the Edge of Temple. Right. Um, and it shouts in a language you don't understand. Then the corridor. Right. Hold on. Make any move or do anything. I'm not reacting. Cat uh, anyway. hears from outside uh, uh, in the language she does understand. And uh, if you're in there, come out now. Um. You are in great danger. Come out now. What are they saying, Cat? They want us to come out. We're in danger. And yes, we are. We're risking wakening the mummies. Or whatever's in those sarcophagi. Well, then we better decide on one of those bad ideas now. Before they wake themselves. Well, let's try talking to Sokar. I the, the whole thing with the either side of the black stone hands out type thing. <clears throat> so this, these people outside may be allies. Allies? The tabaxi. Uh, I think it'll work a little bit differently. Well, not allies then, but um, forces against the common evil. Uh, if I'm right, I suppose the cloud's a bit like a tribe, so they'll see the rest of us as your clouder, right? Possibly. They'll see us as outsiders with another outsider. I'm just an outsider to them, and especially when they see me. They will see us as outsiders. I... I don't wish to be seen at all by them. Okay. So are you saying they're allies or they're not allies? I never said they were allies. This is not a word I have used. So you're saying we should pretend we're not here? Um... Well, they can hear this I... conversation. They probably can't understand it, in fairness. Oh, no. Can they hear? Are we far enough away for them not to hear us? Or does not show you, you, you could be talking in, in hush whispers and you could be far enough away for them not to hear if you wanted them to. If you wanted them not to. Well, they should be talking in hush whispers because we're trying to hide from these people. Yeah. They, they can't hear you. Right. So, basically, you say that we may as well keep on hiding, pretend we're not here, and I hope they go away because they obviously don't know where to get because it just said if you're in there, which indicates they have no idea if we are or not. I... I... I didn't hear the word if. Did, did I? Yeah, they said, if you're in there, you're in great danger. If you're in there, come out. Their yeah. interest here will be for their own... <clears throat> Whatever they're saying to us, it is not for our benefit, it is for theirs. Now, there could be several reasons for that. Maybe they just don't want to wake the high priests. Understandable. Maybe the high priests don't stop at the temple. Okay, I trust your judgement. Uh, Maybe they're here to get the orb themselves. It's maybe they even discovered the orb. After all, it may have landed near the temple, not at it. 
Right, well, we need to make a decision quick, because I think I've already killed a few of them. I suggest we talk to Sokar. It's insane, but it might work. Okay. okay. So you know the ritual. The... Ish. <laughs> I've got some pointers. <laughs> so what you do is, you, if that's what you're going to do... We're going to give it a try. I'll need a volunteer to be the priest the other side. You, you um... Uh, station Rorik at one end of the altar. Mm -hmm. You station Sir Bayor at the other end of the altar. Um, Balin is still keeping an eye on the passage to make sure you're not rushed during the uh, the, the few minutes this is going to take to do the, do the ceremony. You stand in front of the altar and looking up at the black star and you raise your arms and you, you chant the the, uh, the, the, the chant you've, you you learnt when you cast your detect magic spell. The stone seems to to um, glow a little bit. Almost it goes almost transparent. There's found there seems to be an inner glow within it, um, and it seems to swirl. It seems to be a swirling pattern inside, very hardly indistinguishable from how it was. If you weren't staring at it, you 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 wouldn't even know the stone had, had, had sort of changed in any way at all. Oh, great, so car. I'll give the standard, ah, the standard, the, the, the prayer ending. Um, uh, for the dark sun is whatever it was. Bloody blah. <laughs> <laughs> My character's intelligence is higher than mine, in fairness. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. I believe the dark sun has arrived, but we don't know where. Where should we look? Uh, you hear you hear a voice that booms out across the the, the space. It says, uh, "If you wish to be a follower of Sokar, retrieve the star. It is safe. You cannot miss it." Oh, praise great Sokar for the light of the dark star, bloody, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> you do me a constitution roll? Um, probably not. Oh! <laughs> the dice is good, what's my penalty? Um, oh, plus one, really? unnatural 20. Oh, okay, so you, 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 you're okay. <laughs> I don't see why Sokar can't just go and get it himself if he knows where it is. He's a god, like all gods, he's been banished from this world. We have a direction, uh, but there's have things you, outside. Have you, um, have you sort of like finished the ceremony? Are you going to terminate yeah. the ceremony? You are, yes, okay. ter terminate that. Uh, but we have a direction, guys, but there's things outside. You, you all three of you feel quite... Suddenly, you feel quite drained after the connection of the stone returns to normal. You've, you sort of feel like you've come down, and uh, you something you 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 you're, you're quite drained of energy. Mm, what's a... So, which way is it? South. Apparently, we can't miss it. Not you can see that there's still someone standing at the at the first entrance to the to temple. He's not getting bored and going away then. He's not. Can I, tell, can I see anybody else in the background behind him? You can see occasionally the head of someone moving lower down the steps. Can I can make a judgment of how many people there are? Like do a kind of, I don't know, some sort of perceive a kind of... We've seen various people throughout the whole thing, haven't we? Uh, we've heard noises and stuff. Okay, if you do a perception... I mean, can I guess from when I saw them coming towards us, I mean, they were? Was that a big line or was it a single line? Yeah, you, 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 you could do that, yeah. You, you knew there was probably about ten. Um, if you do do a perception... They're kind of like my Tuscan Raiders, aren't they? They're travelling single fire. Um, where's my perception of? Was it wisdom? Uh, yeah, sixteen. 16 okay you think you've seen at least um four more 
in the doorway at different times. Uh, you can also perceive the guy in the doorway standing there uh, is, is seeming quite agitated. He's moving around quite a bit. He's not. He's not calm. He wants to. Uh, he, uh, wants to move. Do you want to move in a way that he wants to go? Yes, he wants to. Or... Just, yeah, he, he, like, you think he, he's. It's dangerous. He right. shouts down the corridor again. He says, uh, "If you're there, you need to come out. This is urgent. We are all in danger. We have lost okay. people already." He's got, we've lost people already, he said. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, I'll sneak at that. Um, okay, so basically, um, do I get a feeling that he just wants to go? I mean, he obviously doesn't know it here because he keeps saying if. Um, so, I reckon that he'll eventually just leave. If he just continue not to say anything. You're not going to stand there forever, is he? No. So we've got okay. to, we can stay here and be quiet and hope they go away. Or we can take them off. Well, there's this big booming voice that came out across the, the room. He knows someone knows someone's there. Yeah, oh, right. So when we don't tell him, he's actually heard. He heard the happening. voice of a guard. So I guess we better give them. Seem, doesn't seem inclined to actually come into the building, though. How yeah, dare you step foot in the temple of Sokar? That'll give him pause. He'll back up a bit on that. You're not worshippers. He turns to look at people further down the down the uh, down to the courtyard, and he moves down a few steps. You can see him backing out. Leave our temple now, for the worshippers oh. of Sokar have returned to take our land once more, and you are trespassing. I whispered to Cat and say, you tell him that if, uh, if he doesn't move, more of his people will die. <laughs> you, um, you you see someone actually come up the steps and, and sort of grab his shoulder and pull him away, and you see the heads just duck out of view. Well, that's about as much as I can do <laughs> with words. If they're waiting for us, they're waiting for us. Like I said, if he comes up again, tell him that if he doesn't leave, more of his people will die. How long are you going to wait? I I don't particularly like being in here at the moment. Um, no. I guess I should... Go straight away. Uh, give him a few minutes to pack up their things, and then I think we should emerge into the courtyard. Okay, so... You give it maybe five minutes. You pull open the door and you walk up the, the corridor to the to the big antechamber. Um, you go out wide around the doorway, so you, you see the scene from the courtyard, and you reach the doorway. And as you peer down, uh, you can see that the courtyard is empty, apart from a couple of of camels that are are lying flat on the ground, but are looking quite strange. In what way? They don't seem, um, they seem drained, they seem shrunken and uh, dried up. <coughs> oh. Should we give so, them some water? The dead. Oh, the dead. I was thinking of seeing if there's any meat left on them. Mouse, Paper rations. with the tabaxi fighting camel. <laughs> of course they went fighting camel cat. <laughs> you did pick a mouse. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, so yeah, from the top of the steps you can see just these two camels. Oh, sorry. In, in, not in the centre of the courtyard, but quite close, just on the floor, collapsed, quite shriveled and shrunken. No dead tabaxi anywhere? No dead tabaxi, no. But Cat, Cat knows they would have taken them with them. If they had if they had a choice, they would have taken them. Okay. Uh, 
Are you venturing out into the courtyard? Um, I'm I'm happy to play the dumb half dwarf. I, I think we should go out together, stay together. Okay, you, you venture out into the bright light, and you start blinking in the bright light for a while as you get used to it again. Um, the courtyard is as quiet as it always has been. Um, if, you, if you examine the camels, you can see that there's no actual uh, injuries on the camels anywhere. No obvious injuries. Um, the packs and saddles are still on the camels, but some of the more important packs have been taken away. Like the, the, the water um, flask have been taken off the camel, any, any food. The saddle's been left. Uh, let's have a look outside the temple, see if we can see where they've gone. Okay, so if you look outside, you can see uh, a, a trail of, of um, hoof prints from camels coming in and another going back out again. Okay, which way did they go? Toward mountains or...? Sort of back the way they came from, from the uh, west. From the west, okay. Well... We're supposed the to horses have... still there. Sorry, yeah. well, I didn't catch that. Are our horses still there? Where did you hide them? I read the back. Yeah, so the temple that they didn't come up from. Yes, you, yeah, the horses are still there, yeah. Right. They, they came straight into the courtyard. Right. They wouldn't send the horses, so that's good. They, know, uh, they knew someone was there because you just buried all these people outside the main gate and the shields. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They know someone had been there. Makes sense. I suggest we head south because it's possible the Tabaxi may have understood ancient. Probably not. It's ancient imperial. It's not a language normal for them. But if it understood what Sokar was saying, we might still be we might now be racing them. Though they have travelled off in the wrong direction. Which is a good start. What time of day is it? It's about midday now. It's oh. there's heat starting to ramp up quite hot. <laughs> Hell no. Let's stay in the shade of the walls and uh, and head out once the, the the worst of the heat has gone and we'll head south. Okay. Okay, so you can wait there until, I mean, obviously about three is probably about the hottest part of the day. Um, after about five, it starts dropping off, but you've still got a few good hours of daylight left. Mm. Uh, nothing occurs in the intervening time the tabaxi don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to head out south? Yes. Okay, so you head out south. And the, as you go further and further south into the desert, the, the dunes get b bigger and higher and higher. Uh, they get harder and harder to climb. Um, the horses start having really uh, a lot of trouble in the soft sand. But uh, once you, um, you make a particularly high dune, you see before you um, a large depression in the ground, a huge crater. Uh, well, you can see that the actual sand you, you're walking on is now a different colour to the, to the lighter sun bleached sand that's on top of the dunes. Well, you're so right. You can't miss it. And as you go towards the crater, it gets redder and redder as you go towards the crater. You're going, going that way? You go into the crater? Yeah. So you, get to, you get to the edge of the crater. Um, you're going to have to leave your horses here. You can't get them down into the crater, so you're going to need to use a rope to climb down into the crater. It's about 20 feet. Okay. Right. And the fateful question is asked, does anybody in the party have any rope? Um, believe it or not, no. 
Well, you, you meant to have prepped before you came on this, or we thought you'd have picked up some rope. Mm. Uh, yeah, explorer's back. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's 50 feet. Okay, so you can actually... Uh, probably the best thing to do is to... Is to um, uh, there's nothing to tie this rope onto, effectively, here, because it's it's sound. It just or saddles, so we'll leave Gerard up top. And... Okay, you can do that. Um, and you can climb down quite easily into the crater. Uh, I'll use the rope. What's the distance across this crater? I mean, how big are we talking? It's about a couple of hundred yards across. Okay. Uh, can you do me, um, what's it called? It's not spot hidden, is it? <laughs> That's a big thing, though. Uh, investigation, then. Yeah, sure. Well, I got 22. Ooh, going well. Yeah, not bad. You can see a glint of something coming from the centre of the crater. Not sure I needed an investigation roll to know it was there, but okay. <laughs> well, I spotted it too. <laughs> it's 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 a strange colour. It's not like a metally colour. It's not like you don't see like a, a colour a colour uh, being reflected. So it doesn't look glint green or blue or anything. It's just a very strange uh, shine. Mm. And you can reach the base of the crater quite easily um, and this is a mixture of like larger stones and rock all the sand has been blasted off the face of the desert so you're almost down to the down to the rock underneath that underlies the desert now um are you going to walk yeah. across the crater you walk That's across the crater towards the center and you can see a rock maybe two feet in diameter um in a, in a funny like almost like um oval shape but rough floating three feet above the ground hello <laughs> i wasn't expecting that do i sense its magical presence like, it can does sense it, its magical presence <laughs> like, does it feel powerful yes hmm. to the extent that all of you can feel that Okay. Uh, I think I'll take the Marie Curie approach to that. Um, I don't know how we move it though. I'm going to try and push it. Yeah, and you can you push it. It does move. Oh, sweet! Didn't die or anything. <laughs> it could have been a sphere of annihilation. <laughs> All right. Give them ideas. So what, what, are you, what are you going to do with it? Uh, push it out it, the crater. Okay, so like I say, it's quite a large, roughly oval black stone. Well, I can't it destroy it without the other one. Who, who's pushing it? Is it cat? Well, we could just push it up the side. I mean, I'm probably the best climber, to be honest. Not that I'll admit it, but so... Getting it out of the crater, yeah, sure, but then we'll just rope it to a horse. Okay. So, um, yeah, but who, who's who's going to be handling this stone? Is it all cat, or is other people going to handle it? Oh, I shall help where yeah, we can. Yeah. We have it here to just can help pull it up. <clears throat> okay. So, <laughs> who's going? Who's going up the rope first? Uh, we should get a, another fighter to the top in case there's someone waiting for us. Okay, so say Bolor or R Rorik, are you going up? Yep, I can go. Okay, Rorik goes up. Uh, you wait on top with uh, Gerard. Um, do, 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 do people down in the pit, I mean, uh, you're getting ready to come up, but you're tying the uh, tying the stone to the bottom of the rope so you can haul up afterwards? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so you can come up, and um, Rorik pulls the pulls the stone up. Once the the, the the last of you reach the top, so as you pull the stone up, it rises quite. There's no weight to it at all. You just seem to be just mm. 
put it up. It just seems to stay at whatever level yeah. you want to put it. So as you, you put it up like that, Rorik, and you grab hold of the stone to, uh, to unleash, uh, uh, untie the rope, uh, you get this surge going through your body. You feel um, refreshed, you feel powerful, you feel um, strong, you feel like you could do anything and take on anyone. Okay. Um, do I still feel like I want to destroy this stone? Destroy the stone? No, you, you don't feel like that, that is that is something you would want to do anymore. Okay. You, you, you feel this hole in this stone feels feels good. I can see why Cressida wants this stone so badly. I feel, I feel really good. I can correct that. <laughs> what are you going to do? You take the stone off of him? Uh, well, I don't see the need to at the moment, but I do give him a rather menacing look. The the sharp teeth, visible and everything. So you take it over to your horse. It is you tilted to the aggressive angle. And you lash it onto your saddle. Uh, but the minute you, you touch it, that feeling subsides. Hmm. And you feel the desire again, like you, you do want to destroy it. Uh, then again. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a, a fleeting thought. First, we need to get back to the mountains and we need to not go past the fortress of the trolls. I suggest we go up through the other path out of the mountains, but we have a bigger problem. This is going to be too big and too powerful to hide in the city. And we need yeah. to get the other stones so that we can use them one to destroy the other. If you remember, back when you saw the, um, you, you, back when uh, Caressida went to see the old woman, the carving you saw there, which is very similar to the carving you saw in the temple, had two niches, or I'm sorry, the carving, both the same size. Two niches, both the same size. Yeah, fist size oval. Oh, so this isn't the stone. Um, it's... what? So we put no. it down to size? No, we've got any inspiration, did they? Uh, no. Did, they, did, did you use your inspiration, uh, Lorik? Yes, I did. Okay, and it was uh, how do I got it last time? Okay, so there's no... What's, what's everyone's passive perception? Twelve. Not that good. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, okay. That's better. That's quite good. So, Valen, uh knowing a bit about um, these sort of gems and things. Maybe uh, it's inside the rock. Yeah. Thinks it might be inside the rock. Oh, I deduce that without passive perception or inspiration. <laughs> That's how to get it out. I just said, yeah, go down to yeah. um, Okay, so just, sorry, it just didn't sound like you, you were saying it's hard to hide the rock in the city. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but once you gave the clue of the two things being the same size, I, I, I realised. Gotcha. Okay. Um, whatever. This floaty thing might be useful in its own way. Um. Hmm. So, perhaps we should stash it with that old woman while we look for the other. No. That's Cressida's mother, I thought. Well, she called it, or her, the mother, but I think it was more uh, a title. Yeah, but do you remember what she called Cat? Daughter. Daughter? Sister? 
Oh, no, it's, it's, yeah, you're right. Mm. So. All right. Actually, so by all, have you touched this thing yet? Uh, probably not. I haven't really been that close to it. I'll bet Baden, have you touched it? No, like I said earlier, I'm not going anywhere near it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to click my fingers a few times and cast the thunderclap cantrip so it's really fucking loud for everyone nearby and I'm going to cast it on this thing to see if I can just break it apart with thunderous sound. Okay. Can you, uh, what's that? Do you need to roll something for that or? Um, well, technically I have to, uh, no, hang on. Uh, each creature other than you within five feet of you must make a constitution saving throw. So it would roll. Um, I'd obviously make sure there's... I'd take it a little away from them. Um, yeah. I don't know what sort of constitution to roll. And the horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll move it out to, to one side. And then I will basically just keep clicking my fingers at it. But every time I do, it's a really, really loud sound. Okay. So... After about three goes, you can actually split the rock, and it does. And the rock falls to the ground, and you're left with this oval-shaped thing floating three feet from the ground. Uh, wait, sorry. So, what, the big oval-shaped thing floats? No, that fell to the ground. That fell to the ground. Yeah, it cracked and fell. Oh, to the and ground. then a small oval rock. Okay, I stuff it in my pocket. <laughs> Okay, stop your pocket, and you... <laughs> your clothes goes up. There you are. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you can put it in your pocket. Okay. But it, it doesn't feel like there's any weight there at all. Mm-hmm. All right, that's that dealt with. But we need to get the other one now. So you're going back via the other way, are you? Yes. Yeah. So it's north. Um, just have a quick look at what that was looking like. That is northeast a bit. And that actually is. Eight. Eight. Okay. And uh, another one. Unnatural 20. Okay. And third one? The final consonant is uh, 13. 13, okay. So you do you, 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 know, you wander off track a little bit again at the start, but you manage to pull yourself back on, on track. Uh, and it's not long before you can see the mountains in front of you. That actually gives you a bit more, bit more of a guide. Um, who who's doing what? Are we? Are you just marching towards the the, the mountains, or are you keep someone keeping a lookout? What's actually happening with you? Well, obviously, I'll be the one trying to, you know, keep us in direction and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. On the top of every June, we can have a little look around. It only takes but a moment. Okay. Failing sees off to the off to the west, another plume of dust. People, people must be riding across the sand again. Uh, Benora sees to the east. Oh, sorry, that's the east. That's where you go. Yeah, sorry. That's the east. Um, failing sort of the dust of the east. To the west, Benora sees a number of figures mounted on camels ranged across the top of a dune some miles off. Mm. What we'll follow Like your friend's cat. And I think we'll probably leave it there for tonight. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're getting out of the desert without me getting some kind of run in with another tabaxi. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> One where they actually see me. Oh dear. Well, thank you very much for that, Phil. I've certainly enjoyed tonight's session.
Oh, good, thank, thank you. you. I'm glad she liked it. Yes. It's not often you get to Vader Temple, but definitely has undead creatures in it, and you don't have to fight them. Well, yes, you, um, you, you avoid that completely, actually. Not exactly if sure if you'd, what... slept, if you'd slept in the temple, you would have been attacked. Ah. Mm hmm. Well. But you went and slept outside, Dave Nabbit. <laughs> Where's Cole? <laughs> I think that one's on Balin, so well done. <laughs> yeah, so. What's that? Uh, suggesting we sleep outside the temple. I think that might have been you. It's what saved us. I don't know if it was or not. Oh. Might have been you. Whoever did it, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Your instincts yes, were correct. Effort. Team effort. Alright, well, thank you very much for watching, uh, Steve. Um, well, Ronnie already went to bed, so we did have a couple of audience. But, uh, well, he didn't like to bed, did he? Okay. Yeah. Um, and I shall end.